What is up, everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning and happy Wednesday. You know what that means. It is Kickball Wednesday. Tonight is the championship game, 7 o'clock. We are looking for back-to-back -back titles. We are playing a team that is 12-0. I think we can beat them. Wish us luck. We're going to go at it. It's going to be a great game. I can't wait. Today, what are we going to talk about? I'll tell you what we're going to talk about. Chris Larson was on Bloomberg yesterday. Had a nice little segment where he talked about Bitcoin and the energy. You need to listen to what Chris Larson says. The words that come out of that man's mouth mean something. And there is a reason that Brad and Chris and Joel Katz, David Schwartz, are all saying the same thing. We're going to get into that. And we're also going to talk about Visa. And Visa is getting into cryptocurrency in a major way. Coming from Visa's CEO. Let's just jump into it, people. What's going on in the market? Well... We've seen a little red, but that is all is good. XRP's down 4.83%. We are sitting at a dollar thirty-seven, while Bitcoin is up a tad bit, and we're sitting at fifty-four thousand nine hundred twenty-two. So, what happens next? That is the major question. As I've been saying, it all really is going to depend on Bitcoin. What does Bitcoin want to do? Does Bitcoin want to bust out, run to the upside, retake dominance of this market? Or does Bitcoin kind of just want to calm down, stay at these levels, and let the altcoins run for a little bit? I do believe XRP will retrace to about a dollar twenty-seven ish, give or take, up or down, before we see our next push up. But obviously, time's gonna tell. The beauty of everything: the market cap is above two trillion. That is a great sign, and that Bitcoin dominance is still sitting under fifty percent as we look at forty-nine point three. All right, let's jump right into the news. So yours truly, Ripple Van Winkle, XRP News underscore, put out this tweet yesterday. I would love to hear people's opinion on this. I got a lot of retweets, a lot of comments on us and likes. I said, what happens to the price of XRP when utility kicks in? It is a big unknown. We have not seen one cryptocurrency in this space. Have utility take over and see what it does to the price. XRP, in my opinion, this is clearly just my opinion, is going to be the first token that has utility takeover, that actually has its live products pushing billions of, of dollars or of currency of fiat through the system with XRP being leveraged. So what happens when XRP, when the on-demand liquidity kicks in? What happens to the price of XRP? <clears throat> Nobody really knows. That is a complete ungiven here. So time will tell. Let me know what you think on that. Then we jump over. Femex. Check this out. We are happy to announce that Femex is offering spot and contract trading for eight new coins. Additionally, due to popular demand, people, we are bringing back XRP on the platform. That was just announced this morning. Femex, another exchange which is led by over eight former Morgan Stanley executives. Let me repeat that. It is run by over eight former Morgan Stanley executives are now bringing back XRP to their platform. I think these Morgan Stanley execs are smart enough to know if, if XRP is a security or not. This is big time. Let's keep it moving. From XRP Crypto Wolf, Visa CEO says the payment giant is moving into cryptocurrencies in a very big way. CEO Al Kelly cited that the spending and purchases of cryptocurrencies, crypto-related APIs for financial institutions, settlement via stable coins, and central bank digital currencies. So we know Visa bought EarthPod, a longtime Ripple partner. We know Visa partnered with MoneyGram. We know Visa partnered with Currency Cloud. What is going on? Why did Visa get into a bidding war over Earthport? You need to ask yourself that question. Why was Earthport such an important acquisition that they went at it with MasterCard back and forth, raising the price of the purchase? Earthport has been a RippleNet partner since like 2014, 2015, six, seven years now. So there is a reason Visa jumped in. And now we're hearing from the CEO that Visa is jumping into cryptocurrencies in a very big way here's the article from the block i'm not going to read you this whole thing but i'm going to read you one segment it says during the tuesday earnings call kelly again drew a distinction between the different elements of the broader plan 
citing the spending and purchases of cryptocurrencies, crypto-related APIs for financial institutions, settlements via stablecoins, and central bank digital currencies. So our focus is on five different opportunities that we see in this space, and I would say that this that this is space that we are that we are leaning into in a very big way, and I think we are extremely well positioned. So here's the interesting part. According to David Schwartz, the biggest problem was the last mile, or if you want to call it the first mile, right? The on and off ramps of when using XRP. Stable coins have solved that issue. Stable coins will be the on and off ramp. So XRP would then transfer value into the stable coin of your liking. That's going to be the same thing for central bank digital currencies. And I use this example all of the time. Say you have, say you have myself using my Visa card to pay a merchant over in Japan. How would Visa leverage CBDCs here? It's simple. They would use, I would pay and it would go on to the XRP ledger through my local, my USD stablecoin. XRP would then bridge it and it would shoot out into the Japanese stablecoin. Therefore, you do not need to hold currencies in all these different markets. Same thing with stable coins or same thing with central bank digital currencies. I've been saying this for quite some time. The Bank of Japan doesn't want to hold the Bank of the United States' dollar. The Bank of the U.S. doesn't want to hold the Japanese dollar. So they need a bridge currency so they don't have to hold foreign currencies anymore. You know what happens to foreign currencies? The value decreases in the blink of an eye. You can wake up one day and the, your fiat currency can just be crashing. So this is absolutely tremendous because, you know, once Visa gets in, you know what happens next? MasterCard comes in, Discover, Capital One, you name it. All of these credit card companies are going to get in. Let's keep it moving. Some more big news from the block. JP Morgan, DBS, and Taymask form a new blockchain firm to improve cross-border payments. So this is very interesting. You got JP Morgan, DPS, and Taymask, who have previously worked on Project Umbin. The Singapore central bank's initiative that explored the application of blockchain technology in multiple currency payments and settlements. So now you got these three getting together to try to improve cross-border payments and settlements. It's going to be very interesting to see what they come up with. Because if JP Morgan, for some crazy reason, uses the JPM coin, you still have a walled garden. Even if you just partner with these other two. Because remember... The JPM coin isn't going to be accepted everywhere. So you are creating a wall garden. That is why you need a universal bridge asset. And that is where XRP plays into the bigger picture of everything, people. And then we move over to my man, XRP Crypto Wolf. Ripple put out a Ripple Insights yesterday. This is big news. Ripple's University Blockchain Research Initiative welcomes its first university partners in Africa, the UAE, and Iceland to drive central bank digital currency research forward. UBRR continues to grow with 40 universities creating new use cases for blockchains and crypto across the globe. You can go read the article. I'm not going to read it to you because we're about to jump into the most important part of this video from a man, Chainsaw Jackson. This is Chris Lawson yesterday. End of you on Bloomberg, pivoting to a greener future. We need to switch to a digital, to a different method. That is the theme of this video. It's a minute 43. Have a listen to what Chris says, and then we're going to go over it. Here we go. Ripple, uh, but there's a lot of attention now being paid, and I know you paid some too, to the carbon footprint of crypto. Uh, but it's also true of some other uh, ubiquitous technologies we all know and love and can't live without. The carbon footprint of technology can be huge. Have we paid enough attention? Should we be working faster in that particular area to make sure we keep it under control? Yeah, you're bringing up a great point. So I think a, a key thing is not just going to renewables and so these new technologies, but also eliminating unnecessary usage of energy. And this is sort of where crypto gets it wrong, right? And there's sort of two work, there's two parts of crypto today. There's a there's a fairly green low energy crypto, about 40 percent by market cap, if you include Ethereum switching over to low energy. And then there's the kind of the original early, you know, kind of technologies like Bitcoin which are based on an extremely energy consumptive uh, kind of method that, you know, 
the equivalent of 100, uh, 12 million U.S. households uh, in energy usage, crazy, uh, producing about 60 megatons of CO2 per year and could double this year, right? So that's unacceptable. And it's an easy switch, relatively easy switch, and nothing's easy, but to change that over to a, another method uh, that doesn't use large amounts of, uh, of energy. Uh, XRP Ledger, for example, uses the equivalent of about 50 U.S. homes per year. So that's dramatic difference, right? So we can save a ton uh, by just switching to smart technologies. You can't do that everywhere. Data centers need energy to work, so you've got to use the energy. But with crypto, you don't need this crazy energy usage to make it work. They need to switch to a different method. All right. So you heard what Chris just said. You don't need this crazy energy usage for crypto to make it work. Ripple and the XRP Ledger are proof of that. He also states that the original technology, like Bitcoin, which are based on extreme energy methods, 12 million U.S. households in energy, which could double this year, is what Bitcoin is wasting. He says it's easy to switch over to another method which doesn't use a large amount of energy. So what if you started running Bitcoin through the ledger for transactions? We already know, we've heard from Chris about Four years ago, it is very, very possible. It has already been done to run Bitcoin through the XRP ledger. That is the beauty about the XRP ledger. It doesn't take up crazy amounts of energy, barely uses any, any energy at all. And it is currency agnostic. You can run any currency, digital, non-digital, whatever you want through the ledger. It is a beautiful thing. And that's where kind of every, everyone needs to go is to move over to the XRP ledger. And that's why I think all these central banks are gearing up and they're going to use the CBDCs and they are going to build on top of RippleNet because we already know that Ripple's giving them private copies of the XRP ledger for them to build the CBDCs on. And then they're going to bridge through the public ledger with XRP. There is a reason that Ripple is working with 40 to 50 central banks because the XRP ledger is just so well advanced and so far ahead of all these other blockchains that it's a no-brainer. Bitcoin and its current state is not going to last. There is either going to be some kind of regulation on it, some kind of tax if you use it, something crazy, but something is coming down the pipelines. And I believe we're going to see it come from Gary Gensler or someone from the Treasury. Keep your eyes open. These words that are coming from Chris and Brad and David Schwartz, they mean something. There, there's a reason they're going on these mainstream news media outlets and talking. Talking about the Bitcoin usage, the consumption, how much energy it uses. There is a reason for this. They are putting the message out there. So when something does come down upon Bitcoin for regulations or the tax and the energy use, something along those lines, they can say that we've warned you, we've told you. We've been putting the message out there for X amount of years, but nobody listened until now, and now it is too late. That's where I'm going to leave it, people. Listen to what Chris Larson says. Listen, make sure you give me a follow on Twitter. We just broke 50,000 XRP News underscore. Like, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Visit the website, XRPRightNow.com. I will be posting two articles this morning. Wish me luck in kickball. Trying to win that championship tonight. That's going to do it for me. Wash your damn hands. Purple Van Winkle is out.